Well, here we are back at the house at Pooh Corner with Jim Hogue, that's me. And your guest for the second half of this interview is Connor Kelly, whose family obviously comes from Ireland and he lives in Boston now. Uh, the first half we spoke about uh, Tulsi Gabbard and her relationship, former relationship to the DNC and possibilities of her becoming a candidate. And uh, we're both interested in seeing how that develops. And we spoke about the influence that uh, Israel has over Congress and the states and municipalities throughout the country, which I find uh, fascinating and uh, a little depressing at the same time. So uh, I think we can switch topics now to Assange and Syria and, and anything else that you want to bring up, Connor. But I do want to yes. point out to our listeners uh, this book, which doesn't seem to be on camera at the moment. Have you got it right? Okay. Uh, the American Trajectory, uh, Divine or Demonic by David Ray Griffin. And uh, I've reviewed some of his books. This is not one of the ones that I reviewed, uh, but I'm reading it now. And like everything else David Ray Griffin has written, it's important for you to read. It's accurate, and it gives a, a good picture of the ideal that Americans, most of them, thought of themselves as well-meaning, religious, and devoted humanists throughout the world, uh, even though the people making the decisions knew darn well that that was not the case. And he takes us back through the 1800s, the war against the Philippines, which is mistakenly called the Spanish-American War, which is part of the fake news that I'm interested in myself and uh, right up through. So again, The American Trajectory by David Ray Griffin is a good read for you. So, uh, Connor, where, yeah. uh, where do you want to start for the second half? Um, I guess we're going to start with Julian Assange. Yeah. Um, yeah, and his uh, captivity for, the last, for almost the last decade for uh, basically telling the truth, exposing the U.S. government for crimes it's committed uh, that they didn't want to be exposed. So, um, number one, it's, it's an attack on free speech. And number two, it's an attack on the fourth estate that, you know, the traditionally held by uh, the media, which obviously the U.S. media these days is just propaganda for uh, corporations and um you know the the that whole umbrella of war profiteering and you know all that other stuff and uh and he and and, and he had, you know like previously before um bill clinton passed the telecommunications act of 1996 um i think the the media in the united states uh almost all of it was owned by 70 corporations since he passed that act, 90% of all U.S. media is owned by six corporations. Mm -hmm. So that's six CEOs, maybe a few dozen chairmen, you know, maybe a few dozen people on board that control all of the media every American, just about all of the media every American sees. You have to seek out independent, reliable independent sources to get the truth. And to me, WikiLeaks has been one of the one of the most effective and uh, and 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 reliable of, of kind of that old school media. The the um, um, you know the uh, Woodward and Bernstein's, so to speak. You know they they don't exist in America anymore. They're all just kind of spokespeople for 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 the for the dnc the deep state whatever you know whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. it's not news anymore it's just it's just uh propaganda 
and uh, it, it's you know it's the same with uh, a man like like Glenn Greenwald who who a lot of good reporting I think and mm-hmm. he's stuck in Brazil you know because he, he's fearful of living in the U S and reporting how he's reporting so it's uh, it's a really horrible situation for for um, real journalists these days uh, who want to explain to the people what their government's doing. I mean, the same thing happened to Edward Snowden. He risked his life and his career and faced to Russia because, you know, because he because he gave the United States people access to, to the information we pay for with the dollars. He gave us that information and, and let us to figure it out, do, do with it what we wanted. Mm-hmm. And what, what happened was is the mainstream media smeared him um the U- the u.s government put out a warrant on him so he's now uh living in exile in russia so um and and and, and julia shot julian assange uh basically stepped that whole kind of um whistleblower like you know, deep state uh whistleblower kind of operation where you just the governments aren't telling you the truth so somebody's gonna get in there get the facts and get them out and that terrifies uh the world hegemony of mm-hmm. like uh nato um the u.s israel and in england they're put their part the partners in balance you know australia england new zealand i think they're all part of some little uh you know uh surveillance network or whatever it is so i don't know i think we, we i think julian assange is is, a, is an exceptional person and uh, and obviously, it, he's he's very strong, well, strong minded. I mean, to be locked in a building for seven or eight years must be just mentally destroying him. Uh, not you know, not being able to go outside and stuff like that. It, it's just uh, it amazes me, and it's all just because he told the truth, which is which is, which is just horrifying to me. Well, one thing that. One, one of many things that did disappoint me about Trump is that when he was confronted in a public meeting about, can you help Assange? And he says, well, I don't really know anything about him. Well, Jeez. Assange is the guy who gave yeah. us all the information that Trump needed to criticize Hillary. Exactly. So wh- wh- what... Where is Trump going with this? I don't really know who he is when arguably he's the most important person on the face of the earth. If he's so important that he could swing the vote, you know, Seth Rich and 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 all of that involved. uh, If if he's the one who put put out this information, which is perfectly correct. Nobody's ever said it wasn't true about Hillary's deal. Wikileaks never retarded the story ever had to retract the story. I'm sorry, I'd say that again. Wikileaks has never ever had to retract the story. Right. In, in the whole time it's existed, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly the most accurate, and he just lays out the facts. That's it. And uh, if you were to just look at them, your jaw would drop because it's so different from what you get from the the mainstream mainstream and the alternative mainstream like somebody like you know Amy Goodman yeah or who, Vice or whatever you know like stuff she, like that she has these limited hangouts where she's not allowed to talk about some things and she is allowed to talk about other things yeah yeah so yeah um, what do you think are the most important things that Julian Assange has given us um Certainly, he basically um, opened up uh, the Pandora's box of secrets of the DNC, and I think that was huge. Even though it appears to me that a lot of Hillary supporters, especially, have simply refused to read them, even though Hillary herself and the DNC has to had to confirm their accuracy because you can't fake those emails like that they're, they're uh, uh, apparently there's some electronic number attached to every email kind of like a fingerprint so came from so and, and they came from these accounts you know the pedestrian emails i mean it, it just it, it, it exposed 
the U.S. Uh, quote unquote democracy for the farce that it is. And uh, I think it opened a lot of people's eyes to the fact that no matter who, you know, and, and it amazes me too that really only, you know, most Americans only get involved in politics once every four years, which is outrageous because the, the corporations and the lobbyists are involved in every election community, uh, you know, region, state, and otherwise. And, you know, most people only wait for presidential elections. And uh, that that just, I mean, it just it boggles my mind. Maybe, maybe a state governor, you know, something like that. But um, other than that, it, it just feels like people are, are, are you know, uh, are are just more concerned with the bread and circuses and mm-hmm. rather than, uh, you know, they they all know they have problems, but due to the mainstream media, um, you know, if you have problems or something happens, it's your fault. You know, you screwed up somehow. They blame the victims. We're all we're all victims of our government. If, as U.S. citizens, we're all victims of our government. So they're playing the blame the victim card and nobody's calling them on it. Uh, I mean, who is going to call them on uh, Basically, all you have is people like Julian Assange because everyone else in that media bubble is going to play by the party line. You know, they're just going to keep following the party line. So mm-hmm. nothing is going to be nothing, uh, accurate. It's going to be, uh, is, is going to be, you know, pulled. And it has to be pulled and it has to be repeated and, until enough, enough people get it. And that they might say something offhand on like one you know, whatever an episode of uh, 60 Minutes or something, and then that's it. You never hear about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, just, uh, it, it's a really sad situation these days that, um, I mean, the number of civil rights that have been stripped from us with, like, the Patriot Act and then Obama's NDAA, which, which is amazing to me because he's a constitutional law professor, and he basically... Uh, did away with habeas corpus, you know? Like, he made it okay for the President of the United States to assassinate American citizens based on intelligence from the CIA, which is insane, you know? Mm-hmm. It, it, like, but he, he, is, he has the power, you know, of a king, you know? And, and as soon as that happened, I said, you just wait until there isn't some sweet-talking... Uh, you know, former uh, constitutional law professor in the Oval Office, and then you and then you talk to me, and then you tell me this is a good idea. Little did I know it was going to be the very next election, and the very worst person, you know, that was going to come into office to prove that to prove that theory right. Mm-hmm. You know, like, uh, uh, and so it's it's just, I mean. Yeah, I, that there's nothing more that I could say that it, mm. that it's a sad situation that that the greatest re- reporter and probably in the world right now is sitting in in, in an embassy for mm. so he's not uh, so he's, so he doesn't have to go to prison for the rest of his life. Mm. I mean, he's basically in a prison now, but at least you know he, he, as long as this goes on, like you know the the, the mm. U.S. government will start to back off, hopefully. And, uh, you know, but from Trump's reaction, maybe not. And then if a Democrat, like a, a deep state Democrat gets in, they're obviously not going to have many breaks. But, well, there's, um, a world, there's a worldwide movement to try to, get, you know, free him. Yes, a, yes. At this point. And, uh, there was actually, uh, b- before there was the Venezuelans a, cave in to the American demands. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. But one other Correct. thing that I wanted to mention was that you talked about the uniformity of mainstream media and one yeah. thing that's really funny is when somebody captures around the country they they, they capture the headlines and the first sentences yeah. and the whole sentence that somebody says in you know Oshkosh is the, the whole sentence somebody says in Bangor Maine yeah it's the line that you have to say yeah. And word for yeah. word, the whole thing all over the country. So that yeah. proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that some higher power is telling these local people exactly what to say. And, yeah. you know, you would expect they're all going to have the same story to some extent. But to have 
it literally word for word is is, is kind of humorous. Um, yeah, and, it's, it all comes from those six CEOs that own ninety percent of the media in this country. Yeah. You know? Well, my heroes. You know, you know, they're working together. They want to see. They all all have the same interests. So, you know, it's mm -hmm. going to be pretty uniform. My heroes tend to be Fox News, you know, and stuff where where they just, you know, just get people worked up about social issues and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. but yeah. Anyways, you were saying the heroes. My heroes tend to be whistleblowers. And yeah, of course. So I'm talking yeah, about Benny. You've you've seen them. Maybe they're. The interviews with Benny and and Steele and um, I don't know. Going back further, you've got Ray McGovern, and then there's Greenwald and Snowden yep. and and yep. these people know going in. And and yep. by the way, I've interviewed Daniel Ellsberg as well. Yeah. So really, you're being interviewed by the same guy who interviewed Daniel Ellsberg. Oh, really? <laughs> um, hey, that's that, that's and, probably uh, the biggest accomplishment. <laughs> so this. History of of whistleblowing is a an alternative history to the United States. It's an alternative history yeah. to what they tell you in the mainstream media. And so, what Daniel Ellsberg said then turned out to be a hundred percent true. What yeah. what Binney is saying now is probably a hundred percent true, but nobody gets to hear what he says. And um, and that's the CIA whistleblower. Yeah. Ray McGovern, the same thing. Yep. Whistleblowers from, you know, NASA space program. All of those people are, are silenced. Yep. And the history books don't report what they have said, even though it's true. The history books tell the story that yeah. the deep state wants them to tell. But we can't just blame the deep state because people get it in their heads. It becomes legend. And if yep. you go against the myth and the legend, they, you can't sell your textbook. Yeah. The, the states yeah. and the, the school just say, what, Osama bin Laden didn't do 9-11? <gasps> Heresy. Well, I think yeah. personally anybody who thinks Osama bin Laden did 9-11 is really missing something up here. Um, it's not only instinctive, but all the evidence now has, has come forth against his being the prime mover in 9-11. Yeah. So, I mean, all, all the Saudi Arabians, you know? The what? So, uh, just about every single one of them was Saudi Arabian. Every single one of the, uh, you know, well, the, 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 the people were Saudis, but now there's, there's the big question on what planes did what? Why did the planes yeah. disappear? You know, yeah. can, correct me if I'm wrong, but planes don't disappear. And buildings, <laughs> if, they're, if they're attacked asymmetrically, they can't fall symmetrically. It's just a physical impossibility. And so all these buildings that fell, they fell symmetrically, even though they were supposedly hit asymmetrically. And that's a physical impossibility. So all of these things put together are never going to become like the assassination of Kennedy. These things are not going to be in the mainstream history books. And I yeah. find that rather depressing. And again, you go back to the war against the Filipinos. Yeah. It's the same thing that it was a Spanish American war. Well, it wasn't Spanish American yeah. war. The Filipinos kicked the asses of the of the Spanish. The Filipinos yeah. had already won the war. Yeah. So the US comes in and claims the Philippines as its own and calls it the Spanish American war. I'm oversimplifying, yeah. but that's that's what happened. So these lies kind of bother me. And it's getting easier and easier to tell them even though people like us are out there you know, waving our arms around and saying, yeah. hey, dumbass, that's, yeah. that's not what happened. Um, <laughs> but we keep at it. We, 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 we keep trying to bring actual facts. And that's back to Assange. Yeah. We couldn't do it. We couldn't do it if it weren't for Assange. And the yeah. mainstream knows that. And that's why he's yeah. locked up in an embassy. Yeah. It's because he brings out the truth. And they can't tolerate that. Same with Snowden. No. Same with Greenwald. Greenwald lives in, I think, Brazil. Yeah, it's Brazil. Now, yeah. um, and James Corbett is in Japan. Yeah. Uh, the people who bring out the truth are not that many of them that I know of are in the United yeah. States. Well, so, I mean, I mean, they're risking everything for pretty much no reward. So you know, 
Oh, I'm sorry, I lost that. Uh, that they're they're risking everything for almost no reward. So uh, you know, it takes a real uh, real patriot and real citizen and someone with real integrity to do that kind of thing. Yes, know? absolutely. So um, back to Syria. Um, yeah. We all got a big kick out of how Trump finally did what the left wanted him to do, and then they start running around like chickens with their heads cut off because he actually <laughs> did it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so where uh, I've interviewed over the years on my radio program several experts on Syria, and it's a, I admit it's extremely complicated, but yeah. we can there are parts of it you can simplify. And the Israel stealing the Golan Heights, that's perfectly okay now. Yep. It's simply yeah. Israel, end of story, can't talk about the Golan Heights stolen from, from Syria. But if I were Syrian, I would remember that. Yes. And, and just as if, World if, War II pretty much was supposed to end the idea of militaries going to other countries and basically stealing territory. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to end that. Yeah. But but, you know, obviously those things don't happen. When they want to do it, they do it. That's what hegemony is, what the world hegemony is. That's why they have it. And that's why, um, you know, the media doesn't, doesn't tell that story because it's not meant to be told, you know, in the, from their point of view. Like, that's not the story to be told. The story mm -hmm. is, you know, well, now the story is, oh, we need to protect the Kurds. It's like, well, you know, that wasn't what was going, you know, before it was these, these, you know, before it was the white helmets fighting Assad who was gassing people. Now I'm under no, uh, you know, illusions that Assad is like a good guy or, you know, anything like that. But the, the Syrian people elected him. And then uh, they, there was, there was a, an, an insurrection and recently, I've read an article recently that, that has been established that the deputy prime minister or somebody in the intelligence community in Israel finally admitted that they were arming the opposition in the Syrian war. Yeah. They finally admitted. So, you know, it's like, and, 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 and again, back to Tulsi Gabbard, she was the only one who went there to check it out. And she goes, the U.S. forces don't belong here. We don't believe this isn't our fight. You know, and, and I think she also realized that the uh, peop, the opposition or the, quote, freedom fighters were terrorists who were being armed. And yeah. we already made this. We make we make that mistake constantly. We do it over and over again. We arm terrorists to change a regime, a regime and then the terrorists turn around and, and do something to us. You know what I mean? Like. It's like we arm them, we train them, and we, we you don't expect the, it's a, you know so expect the dog to turn around and bite you, you know what I mean? But um, I think that was a big thing with Syria that that it's it's actually come out. And I was surprised that it came out, but when when someone in a government position admits to something, you kind of have to report it. Um, and so it finally came out that Israel has been arming the uh, the. I, I personally, I call them the insurrectionists um, in Syria, and now that and, and Syria finally, you know, chased them out of there, and people couldn't be happier. They were preventing people from getting water, from getting food, from leaving war-torn areas, and now these people are free to move around and get the help they need, and the aid they need, and uh, you know, it's it's uh, it, it's complicated, and the, a lot of the stuff in the Middle East. Uh, goes back centuries. These kind, these kinds of um, uh, feelings of, of of revenge and and, and uh, you know this is mine, you know this isn't yours, uh, and so it, it, you got to tread lightly in that region, mm -hmm. and we're mm -hmm. kind of just bulldozing th through it. You know what I mean? So you, you, I was just reminded of a quote by Mark Twain, and I'll, I'll get it wrong, but um, <laughs> the difference between a savage and a civilized person is that the savage has to give up whatever the civilized person wants without a fight. <laughs> what a brilliant, brilliant yeah. way, way to put it. And yeah. um, here we have the, the news I just heard yesterday was that Israel is now bombing a section of Syria. And they've warned Syria not to stop it. 
not to shoot down the planes that are bombing them. Not to defend their own. Have you heard that story? I have not. I have not. But yeah, that's what they do constantly. They say, like, don't say we're going to attack you and don't do anything back. Mm -hmm. It's going to get worse. You know, same with uh, Gaza. Like they're, they're always saying people are using hospitals and schools as shields. Gaza is the most densely populated area on Earth. You cannot fire a gun or a rocket without standing next to a kid or being near a hospital or, you know, mm -hmm. and, or being near a school. It just can't, you just can't do it. It's an excuse to, 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 for, for slaughter. And uh, going back to um, Trump moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Israel, that he did that on Israel, basically Israel's Independence Day, the day the, the, day the country was founded. And uh, obviously there were protests, and the IDF went in and started, you know, shooting protesters and uh, gas grenades and all that stuff. I mean, you know... I thought to myself, could you imagine if on the 4th of July we, like, went to, uh, to, to like, um, you know, Native, Native American reservations and, and shot tear gas and started shooting people, like, to celebrate the 4th of July? It was, I was just horrified by that whole situation. I, I didn't know about that. Yeah, yeah. There was this big... The, the, uh, there were protests by... Palestinians because the, because the embassy is being moved to, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, and they obviously have holy holy sites in Jerusalem that you know they respect and, and stuff like that. And now that the Israeli embassy or, or the Israeli United the United States embassy in Israel is now in Jerusalem, it's giving basically control of Jerusalem to Israel and the United States. So they were they were protesting that not violently. They were, they were gathered together, you know, along the fenced-in borders where they're not allowed to leave. And, the, you know, and, and the IDF just started firing and shooting, shooting gas. The Palestinians were, were trying to hit gas grenades back with tennis rackets. Mm -hmm. um, it was a pretty hard, yeah, it was a, I think uh, somewhere like, um, it might have been high as 1,000 people were killed that day. Okay, well, and, we, have to, we have to wrap it up. And, okay, uh, all right. and, and don't forget, folks, the American soldiers that were conveniently shot just at the right time in, in oh, Syria. Yeah. Yeah. That, we didn't talk yeah. about that. Uh, all right, your guest has been Connor Kelly. This, yep. has Jim, this is Jim Hogue at the house at Pooh Corner. And um, this will be posted at the Orca site on YouTube and locally and hopefully on my site, which is the house at Pooh Corner. Thank you very much.